Right whales are an incredibly beautiful species that play an important role in oceanic ecosystems and the multi-million dollar whale watching industry. Not only are they an Australian icon, the humpback whale performs a vital part in stabilising the aquatic food chain and are considered to be an indicator of ecosystem health. Although hunted to the brink of extinction in the 1950s, humpback whales have made a remarkable recovery and have gone from endangered to least concern on the IUCN red list. However, there are still threats that put the humpback whale in danger, making it crucial to continue their conservation. Australia's whaling history began in the late 1700s and carried through to the mid-1900s. Although it began as a slow, arduous process requiring several man-hours, it quickly became one of the country's first primary industries. With the development of new and advanced whaling technology, whaling rapidly increased. As a result, there was a huge loss of whales from the Southern Hemisphere during the mid-1900s. This was mostly due to the British, Dutch and Japanese floating whale factories in the Australian waters of Antarctica. However, whaling stations along the coast of Australia also contributed greatly to the deaths of many whales. The three main whaling stations in Australia were in Byron Bay, New South Wales, Albany, Western Australia and Tangaluma in Queensland. An estimated 8,300 humpback whales were killed on the east coast of Australia during the 13-year whaling industry boom. Humpback whales were exploited primarily for their meat, but also for a variety of organs and substances, including their tendons, bones, oils and gelatin, which were used in a wide range of products and pharmaceuticals. Whalers used extremely cruel methods to kill the whales, often resulting in the catch dying a slow and painful death. After suffering from the stress of being chased by a whaling boat, the whales were harpooned and speared with an explosive shell detonated from the boat. They were then towed back to the floating factory or into shore to be flensed and stripped into pieces. Australia's humpback whale population was severely depleted by the 1960s, with numbers estimated at 500 individuals, only 3.5 to 5 per cent of the pre-whaling population. Commercial whaling was no longer a sustainable industry. It has been assessed that 95 per cent of the East Coast population of humpback whales were killed between the 1950s and 1960s. Due to raised concerns, the International Whaling Commission protected humpback whales worldwide in 1966. Whaling of other species continued in Australia until 1979 when the anti-whaling policy was adopted, ending all commercial whaling across the country. In 1986, the IWC followed suit, establishing a global moratorium that brought the majority of commercial whaling to a complete halt. This was a major milestone in whale conservation. Ever since Australia ceased whaling, it has been playing a significant role in the protection of whales. It is considered one of the strongest anti-whaling countries in the world and is a leader in non-lethal whale research. Australia is currently experimenting with non-lethal research methods such as satellite tagging and DNA sampling in order to demonstrate that viable information can be obtained without harming whales. In regards to conservation, Australia followed in the footsteps of the International Whaling Commission, establishing the Australian Whale Sanctuary under the Environmental Protection of Biodiversity Conservation Act of 1999. The sanctuary protects all cetaceans in 10.8 million square kilometres of Australian waters. As well as enforcing whale conservation within the country, Australia is actively involved in the preservation of whales internationally. In March 2014, Australia won a three-year court case against Japan, bringing an end to Japan's Antarctic whaling program, JARPA 2. The court concludes that the special permits granted by Japan for the killing, taking and treating of whales in connection with JARPA 2 are not for purposes of scientific research. JARPA 2 began in 2007, 
and was a 16-year program with an annual quota of 935 minke whales, 50 fin whales and 50 humpback whales. During the time Darapa 2 was active, over 3,600 whales were killed. Fortunately, due to worldwide opposition and interference by NGOs such as the Sea Shepherd, humpback whales were left unharmed and catches of other targeted whale species were significantly reduced. Australia proved its commitment to whale conservation in its victorious win, which has prevented approximately 14,000 whales from being killed by JARPA 2 in the future. Since the closure of all Australian whaling stations and the International Whaling Commission moratorium, humpback whales have made a remarkable recovery. The current rate of humpback whale population growth is averaging at 10 to 11 percent per annum, with the population doubling every seven years. A 2013 study has shown a strong population of approximately 19,000 humpback whales migrating along the east coast of Australia alone. The conservation efforts of many organizations are definitely proving successful. However, there are still threats that put the humpback whale in danger. Threats include hunting, ship strikes, bycatches in fishing, environmental degradation, chemical pollution, noise pollution, overexploitation of prey, disturbances, and climate change. These threats all stem from human action and therefore can be minimized or prevented altogether. Dream so big and loud, there were ten thousand whales around. Whoa, oh, 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 whoa, oh, 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 oh,